Today's story begins in RiverClan with a cat named Leopardlear. She had been spending most of the morning speaking with the medicine cat, Springshine, asking if she needed anything. Why, yes, we're quite short on nearly everything at the moment, Springshine responded. Oh, that's not good. I'll make sure to help out. Leopardly responded with a smile and small nod. Thank you kindly, Leopardlear, the medicine cat smiled back. Turning to leave camp, she practically bumped into Sparrowfeather, the deputy. Sparrowfeather, uh, have you seen our leader? She asked. He had been gone for a few days at this point. Uh, I've heard rumors that they were killed. She recently on a patrol had heard some rogues bragging about killing an important clan cat. She decided that it was finally time to tell him. I guess that means I take his place, he said with a bit of nervousness, but still fairly confident. I will support you, of course. Leopardlear was a loyal River Clan cat, no matter who was in charge, but she had been friends with this cat for a while. He was a wonderful deputy, and he would make a wonderful leader. He pauses for a moment before looking back at her. Leopardlear, will you be my deputy? She freezes, blinking a few times. Are, are you sure? I, I would be honored. She bows her head to him. And just like that, he jumped up onto the leader's rock. All cats old enough to swim come for a clan meeting. And just like that, cats slowly came out of dens. The medicine cat was there. River Clan wasn't as big as it used to be, just like the, you know, ripples in the water. Sometimes they were larger and sometimes they were smaller, but that was, that was okay. Our previous leader has fallen and I must take place. I appoint Leopardlear as my deputy, he spoke as Leopardlear proudly walked over to the smaller rock next to him. She smiled at her few but loyal clanmates. I promise to protect this clan with my life, she meows proudly. A few cats seem mildly suspicious at the sudden disappearance of their old leader, but still accept Sparrowstar and Leopardlear. She felt a sigh of relief when Springshine spoke up. You two have brought great honor to our clan thus far. While we must surely mourn, I know our clan is in great pause. At least someone believed in her. The rest of the meeting went on like normal. It felt nice to appoint new kits to be apprentices and a few new apprentices to be warriors. Just as the gathering was ending, a strange cat just strolled right into camp. They reeked of Shadow Clan. Quickly, Sparrow Star leaped down and approached them, the rest of the warriors and Leopard Lear surrounding this cat. What are you doing here? Sparrow Star asked. You are not allowed to be here, Leopard Lear hissed. This rogue seemed to just walk past them not even understanding what they were saying. So she let Sparrowstar handle it and turned to her clanmates. Who would like to go on patrol? She asked. Ghost Tail, a pretty white and gray colored she cat spoke up. I would. Just as another warrior, Briar Creek spoke up. Same here. Surge Stone, who was the largest, walked up and looked like he also wanted to go. So she nodded. The three of you can go. I'll stay with Sparrowstar in case he needs help. Looking back at Sparrowstar, 
seemed like he had convinced this strange cat to leave and not come back. At least she didn't seem to be a threat. She left gladly, Sparrowstar sighed. As the two spoke, Leopard Lear couldn't help but feel a little nervous, and she finally spoke up. I'm worried about the lack of kits, sir. The leader was silent for a moment before locking eyes with his deputy. I am as well. Before they could continue, the patrol was back. Ghost Tail, who was usually a quiet cat, spoke up. I brought back some chevrolet. Leopard Lear looked back at Spray Star. Oh, hopefully the clan will have some soon, she whispered before looking over. And Springshine had joined them. You have been an immense help, Ghost Tail. Thank you. Leopard Lear smiled. It was so nice to see her warriors and medicine cats getting along. Even if she was only the deputy, this was her family. Sparrow Star added, Kit season is just around the corner. It'll come eventually. She nodded respectively before taking a few steps. I'll be doing some evening hunting and we'll be back. She smiled and brushed past Sparrow as she left. She managed to catch a few fish and even found some time for sweet spring shine. Thank you, this will assist our clan. And congratulations on becoming Deputy Leopard Lear. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, it was unexpected. Well, I certainly am not surprised. Springshine responded. Leopard Lear smiled as Thunderbranch entered. Am I intruding? Followed by Breer Creek and Surge Stone. No, no, welcome, the medicine cat spoke. Leopard Lear smiled as she watched her clan all work together. I should get going, she said as she headed out. She had asked to speak privately with Sparrow Star. She couldn't admit that she had started to get some feelings for him. I have something to say, she spoke calmly. He laid down to get comfortable. Go on, he said when Ghost Tail approached. Sparrow Star, her voice seemed a little panicked. Well, I have always had feelings for y She pauses quickly as Ghost Tail speaks and Sparrow Star leaps to his paws. She quickly joins him. Wind Clan apprentices would like to speak to you, Ghost Tail says, walking off. Before Sparrow Star could even speak, she quickly walks over to the two smaller Wind Clan cats, eyeing them. What could they be here for? But Sparrow Star sits down and smiles with a friendly smile. Hello. The medicine cat also here. It made Leopard Lear feel better knowing that Springshine was here just in case, you know, they maybe looked sick. The last thing they needed is sickness running through the camp. But her mind was brought back to reality as one of the apprentices spoke. We would like to join your clan. After a few moments, Leopard Lear looked over at Springshine. Springshine, do you need an apprentice? Well, when a willing cat comes along, it would be nice to teach another medicine cat. Well, maybe one of these two will be able to help you, she said, as the two little apprentices scuttled off to find a den to sleep in. It was in the middle of the night at this point. Leopard Lear was about to turn around to go to her den when Sparrow Star stopped her. You were saying? She shyly avoided eye contact. N nothing. I should uh, get to bed, 
she said before quickly running off. Once in the safety of her own den, she curled up on her well-worn mossy bed. She deserves some sleep. Time continues to, well, go on, and some moons pass. Nothing very interesting happens to the clan as a whole, but somewhere deep down in Leopard Lear, something was happening. She was starting to develop a crush, and it was leading her to some nights sneak out of camp, and tonight was one of those nights. Leopard Lear easily managed to leave the camp and quickly made her way over to Shadow Clan territory. She hid in a bush as a few Shadow Clan cats passed her. Thankfully, they didn't see her. They weren't the smartest group of cats, but still, she had a reason to be here. A cat she had grown up seeing was now leader of Shadow Clan. This cat was Noise Star, a dark coated tom, and Leopard Lear was just so infatuated with him. She would sneak over to Shadow Clan and just watch. She knew it was wrong because they were different clans, but she would never say anything about it, so it was fine, right? But before she realized, day was already breaking and everything around her was illuminating. Oh no, she had to get back. Usually Sparrow Star held morning announcements just to, you know, get everyone on the same page. Oh, Sparrow Star. He was a great leader, but oh, she didn't want to disappoint him. Running back, she managed to scoop up a bundle of yarrow, leaping over rivers and making it back to camp just in time. Sparrow Star was sitting atop of his rock, but hadn't started the meeting yet. Thank goodness. She had time to drop off the yarrow to Springshine, who seemed like she was helping one of the apprentices. Leopard Lear couldn't help but smile, but her attention was quickly turned as Sparrow Star began to speak. Leopard Lear quickly jumped up on her little rock and looked out at her clanmates. Everyone began to gather. We welcome our new apprentices, such as our medicine cat apprentice, Echo Paw, and Sapphire Paw, will be mentored by none other than our deputy, Leopard Lear. Leopard Lear looked around in shock, meeting eyes with the once wind clan apprentice. She walked over and gently booped their nose. And with that, the meeting is dismissed, Sparrow Star said, turning around to focus his attention elsewhere. Leopard Lear padded over to Springshine. Seems like we both have our paws full now with apprentices. They chatted for a few moments before she looked at Sapphire Paw. Let's go on a patrol. Leopard Lear easily guided the smaller apprentice across the rivers, showing them the easiest places to jump at. She even explained that they usually try to bring back herbs for the medicine cat while on patrol. Kind of a two fish with one uh, swipe, if you, you know how the saying goes. <laughs> The two cats continued to stroll around their territory. Leopard Lear couldn't help but just bask in the sunlight and the warmth. She loved River Clan so much. It was truly the best clan. Leopard Lear made sure to stop and explain that the two legs live a little bit that way and it's best to avoid them at all cost. The small apprentice looked around wide-eyed and simply nodded before running over and picking up a few marrow leaves. Is this Yarrow? Sapphire Paw asked. Leopard Lear thought a moment. Yes, I, I believe so. Would you mind bringing some? Thank you. It was nice. 
She never got to be a mother, and having an apprentice around hmm, just set off something maternal in her. Leaping up onto a dead, fallen tree, she jumps up onto the highest area. This is a good lookout spot. You can see a lot from here. Sapphire Paw followed. Mm-hmm. And the two of them began to walk back to camp. Sapphire Paw immediately ran over to the medicine cat den, looking around at where to put it down. You can drop it here. Good job. That's all for today, she said, before walking over to Sparrow Star, who was lounging on his usual rock. Finished Dawn Patrol. Everything looks good, Sparrow Star, she spoke. Well done, Leopard Leader, he purred, leaping down and giving her a gentle shoulder bump. Do you need anything else? I was thinking about a hunting. I'm okay. You do whatever you want. You deserve a break, he says before turning around and leaping back up on his rock. Leopard Leader nodded. I'll be back, she said before leaving the camp. She spent the most of the evening walking around and memorizing where different herbs were. She spent a little time hunting and just generally enjoying the day when she suddenly began to pick up scents of different clans. Running in the direction of the scent, she managed to hear the word traitor. I guess you could say that. She couldn't really pick up what these two cats were saying, so she crouched and crept forward. One smelt of shadow, and the other thunder? One of them claws at the rocks. Get lost! She puffs up and walks over. Definitely, they were two different clans. Thunder Clan doesn't take traitors! The other cat looks nervous. Leopard Leer just wants to know what's going on. What is Shadow Clan and Thunder Clan doing so close to our camp? She yowled. The Shadow Clan cat spoke up. I'm in Shadow Clan, idiot. And suddenly another Thunder Clan cat approached. Leopard Leer began to growl. I said Shadow Clan and Thunder Clan. What is Shadow Clan doing so close to here anyways? These cats were all bickering back and forth. Apparently the Thunder Clan cats were trying to get rid of this Shadow Clan cat and the Shadow Clan cat was leaving their clan. Oh, if you're interested in joining, follow me, but if not, please leave. The Thunder Clan cats managed to leave and the Shadow Clan cat seemed like he was following her. She was very suspicious, but wanted to make sure Sparrow Star could see him first, whether they should attack or let this ex Shadow Clan cat in. She led him over to her leader, who immediately picked up on the strong scent walking over. Sparrow Star, I found this ex Shadow Clan cat. She said, as a very matter of fact, Sparrow Star looked the cat up and down. Uh, hello. They seem to want to join. I'll let you handle it, she said before casually walking off. She knew that Sparrow Star could handle it, and she wanted to make sure the rest of her clan was doing okay. Everything seemed to be perfect in the clan. There were no problems, until she almost stumbled over something. Looking down, it was a small kid she didn't recognize. Tilting her head, she questions. Hello, kid. Quickly, Sparrow Star was walking over. The kid mumbled, Oh, uh, hello. It seemed startled. What are you doing alone? Where are your parents? She asked. It didn't necessarily smell like an enemy clan, but eh, she didn't recognize this kit. Leopard Leer, Sparrow Star, 
a ghost tail and a few other clan cats all sort of look at this kit puzzled eventually ghost tail spoke up the borders are clear but i think i'm going to do another patrol leopard there thank you ghost tail she said as she looked back over the kit sparrow star had seemed to already lost interest or gained interest somewhere else and kind of nonchalantly walked away leaving leopard there alone with this small kit i i don't know where mother went the small kit shifts nervously they left earlier leopard there frowned she wasn't really sure what happened but either way this kit needed someone to look after them oh well i can take care of you if you need anything she said not really sure what to say but figured the least she could do was keep the kit warm it looked old enough to start eating regular food R really thank you of course just stick by me leopard there purred it has now been a little while and honey kit was finally old enough to kind of understand everything around the camp and so leopard there was giving a little tour this is the medicine den you can come here if you're sick she said slowly walking in springshine seemed to be out with sparrow star but ghosting breeze was here oh okay the small kid said as the noble sparrow star strode past her this is ghosting breeze one of our talented medicine cats leopard Lear said the larger tom's ears swiveled as he looked at the kit and smiled warmly i'm here if you have any injuries he said honey kit looked up their eyes wide as they smiled a small little hello leopard Lear chuckled how have things been going ghosting breeze they've been great he gave a single nod as sparrow star entered the medicine den oh that's wonderful and hello sparrow star she greeted gently bowing her head to him when suddenly the medicine den erupted with cats springshine was back with her apprentice ekopaw and they had a small little kit with them must have been the task they were dealing with hello sparrow star purred before casually leaving the medicine den she felt her fur bristle slightly before looking back at ghosting breeze who asked oh, what about you uh, oh uh, doing well apprentice is learning and prey is flowing the long furred medicine cat began to groom himself oh that's wonderful he said of course rebuilding has been hard but we're we're definitely getting there well we'll get out of your fur have a good night ghosting breeze she says turning and ushering honey kit out of the medicine den of course farewell he said leopard Lear smiled and gently brushed past springshine on her way out who was on their way back in with echo paul right behind her the stars slowly began to twinkle in the sky as leopard Lear found her way to the nursery it's where she had been staying with honey kit to make them feel more comfortable on her way over she couldn't help but hear sparrow star speaking to the ex shadow clan cat they seemed to be speaking in a hushed tone so she quickly walked past and into the nursery curling up in a nest around honey kit when ghost tail suddenly entered she carefully dropped a mouse right in front of the kit leopard Lear purred thank you so much we'll both appreciate this she said sharing dinner with honey kit before they both fell asleep some time had now passed a few moons or so and during that time leopard Lear actually found another kit while on a border patrol this small white kit was known as moon kit and leopard Lear decided to try to raise her with honey kit uh, with help from other queens of course as deputy she felt sort of like a mother of everyone on top of uh apprenticing sapphire paw but for right now everything was okay and she calmly slept with the kids 
Leopard Lear wakes up as she feels her body's natural rhythm. She realizes it's time for a morning hunt if she wanted to feed her clan before her kids got up. So she quietly wiggled out of the nest and whispered, stay here kids, before walking over to Sapphire Paw, gently pawing at her. Sapphire Paw, are you awake? The small apprentice wiggled and nodded. Hmm? Leopard there spoke quietly. Can you watch the nursery for me? I need to hunt quickly. I'll be back. Thank you, she says, bowing her head to her apprentice before going back over to the kits. Yes, of course, Sapphire said, following along. She nuzzles the two kits. I'll be back. She couldn't help but grow attached to them. They were the clan's kits and her kits, and one day she hoped to be leader, and then everyone would, you know, truly be her family. Walking past Ghost Tail, she noticed her yawn slowly waking up. She would be part of the Dawn Patrol, and it was nice to see her warriors up. Leaving the camp, she spotted Little Otter. Little Otter, would you like to hunt with me? She asked. I'd love to, the small brown-coated Molly said. Wonderful, Leopardly responded, leaving camp and heading out with Little Otter. They patrolled along the usual hunting grounds. But then suddenly Leopard Lear had an idea. She headed towards WindClan territory where the bridge was. She knew that she could find a bunch of little small minnows around there and the kids really loved them because they were small. So she took the time and tried to find as many as possible. Little Otter quickly diving in after her and fishing herself. The two she cats just looked wonderful both in the water and swimming around. They were truly River Clan cats. After they both grabbed their fish, they headed back. Good job, the clan will be happy, she said, as they both hurried with their mouth full of fish. Entering the camp, she saw Sparrow Star sitting on his usual rock. It was so nice to see him there. And in the background, she could also hear Springshine teaching Echo Paw something about herbs. It was just so nice and familiar to her. She quickly drops off all of the fish in the fresh kill pile. After speaking briefly with Sparrow Star, she hears the word moon kit coming from the medicine den and she stops what she's doing and quickly heads into the medicine den. Inside, she sees Springshine talking to Echo Paw, a small black kit, and then Moon Kit sitting in a smaller nest alone with Ghosting Breeze handing her some berries. Thank you, she heard Moon Kit say as she finished eating the berries, and Ghosting Breeze smile and nod. Mm hmm. Is she okay? Leopard there asked. Not too frantic, but definitely concerned as she stood beside Mooncat. Carefully, she laid down next to her. Of course, it was just a bellyache. Ghosting Breeze comforted her. Oh, thanks, Dark Clan. Everyone chat for a little while. Once you are six moons, you'll be able to come an apprentice, she explained to Mooncat, who was curious about how it worked. She mewed, yay! Ghosting Breeze carefully leaned down. And what do you want to be, little one? He asked. The cat looked around for a moment. I want to be a medicine cat. But I'm tired now, the kid said, curling up and quickly dozing off. Leopard there smiled. Well, good night. I'll be back. She nuzzled the kit before leaving the medicine den. She almost bumped right into Sparrow Star. Oh, hi, Sparrow Star. The borders are clear, and I even hunted earlier, she told him, and he smiled and nodded. Good job. Of course. After a small chat with him, she made her way back to the nursery. Sapphire Paw was sitting, patrol guarding the nursery, ready to attack if anything were to happen. Leopard Lear smiled so wide. Thank you so much, Sapphire Paw. Make sure to go grab some fresh kill for breakfast, okay? She said, 
just as it started to rain. Oh, would you look at that? Rain, Leopardthere said, as she began to feel the small little droplets of water soak into her pelt. Oh, wow, Sapphirepaw said, leaving the safe, dry nest. And you're welcome, she said before quickly padding off. Quickly shaking out her pelt, she entered the nursery and curled up around Honeykit. Looking outside of the den, she couldn't help but spot Sparrow Star hobbling into his own den. No one wanted to admit it, but Sparrow Star was getting pretty old and unfortunately was on his last life. Looking down at her small foster kit, she couldn't help but think about her future. She never thought that she would actually become leader one day. Was she ready? Thoughts whirled around in her mind. It has been a few moons since we had last seen Leopard Lear, our River Clan deputy. This morning she awoke bright and early. It was raining, and she headed over to Sparrow Star's den. But unfortunately, she discovered Sparrow Star had passed away. He was on his last life and was getting up there in age. She knew what she needed to do. With a heavy heart and a dripping pelt, she leaped up on the high rock. All river clan cats that are old enough to swim, please gather for a clan meeting, she said loudly enough so her clanmates could hear her through the pouring rain. As the clan began to assemble before her, she could tell their look of confusion quickly turned to a look of dread. Leopard Lear took a deep breath before speaking. Sparrow Star has died from old age. As deputy, I will take his place and travel to the Moonstone to become Leopard Star and gain my nine lives. Small cries could be heard coming from the clan. While Sparrow Star never had a mate or kits, he was still very much loved by every single member. But without skipping a beat, she continued. I will also choose a new deputy. My choice is Ghost Tail. Will you accept the role as deputy of River Clan? The mostly white she cat stood up and spoke. I accept. Her voice was a little nervous, but Leopard Star was very excited to have her as her deputy. The meeting continued. She promoted some apprentices into warriors and some kits into apprentices. Before finishing, she spoke up. Ghosting Breeze, will you travel with me to the Moonstone? He gave a firm nod and she smiled. She knew she could trust him. Looking back over at her clan, she spoke. Clan dismissed before leaping off of the rock. Leopard Lear had hoped that the rain would let up as they traveled to the Moonstone, but it was still pouring down. Finally, she thought that they were close. It's somewhere around here, she said. She had come once as an apprentice, but that was many, many moons ago, but eventually Ghosting Breeze had found the entrance and they both calmly walked into the tunnel. The large stone glowing on her bluish pelt. Thank you, Ghosting Breeze. This shouldn't take very long, she said as she gently pressed her head against the stone before laying on her side and falling asleep. Leopard Lear woke up but didn't feel completely there. Looking around, she realized that it was Star Clan and slowly appearing in front of her was her leader, Sparrow Star. Sparrow Star grinned. I'm so proud of you. He leaned forward, touching noses with her. With this life, I give you empathy for others. Of course. Thank you so much, Sparrow Star. I will leave River Clan in your honor. Rest well, Sparrow Star. I'll be back one day. She smiled softly, gently nuzzling him for the last time. After a few moments, he turned to walk away. You'll do great, he said before fading. She woke up instantly back at the Moonstone, the same 
glow as she looked over to see Ghosting Breeze, giving him a small smile and nod before leaving the tunnel. Let's head back, she said, as Leopard Star and her head medicine cat, Ghosting Breeze, headed back to River Clan. It had now been a few days since the two had made it back from the Moonstone safely. Leopard Star was slowly getting more and more comfortable with her role, and today she sat up on the high rock as Little Otter approached her. Uh, Leopard Star? She spoke out somewhat nervously. Leopard Star looked down. Yes, Little Otter? Um, there is something I would like to speak to you about, the warrior said. Leopard Star raised her paws. Of course, let's go to my den, she said, just as the rain began to pick up once again. She spotted Springshine returning from a herb gathering session. The rain must have brought her in. Leopard Star curled up in her den as she watched Little Otter. After a few awkward moments, Leopard Star finally spoke up. What's on your mind? Well, uh, she started. When I first joined this clan as an apprentice, but was quickly cut off by Ghosting Breeze, who approached them, uh, all right, come with me. Little Otter looked over, but quickly continued. I couldn't learn anything, so I began a queen, but Leopard Star noticed who had approached and quickly stood to her paw, ushering Little Otter to pause for a moment. It was Noise Star. Leopard Star quickly rose to her paws, her heart beating faster. She notices the Shadow Clan leader. Hello, Noise Star, she says. Hello, Leopard Star, he says in a very low voice. She needed to act cool and collected in front of her clan, so she waited for him to speak next. Eventually, he spoke up. May I speak with you? She didn't want to seem too eager, so she waited a few moments, pretending to ponder over the question before looking at Little Otter. Yes, Little Otter, I will speak with you later. I apologize. Little Otter nodded and quickly patted off as the two leaders entered a little bit further into her den where nobody could hear them. She stared and watched him as he got comfortable and then spoke. Do you know a cat that came here? The name Blood or Bloody something. Leopard Star immediately recognized the name. Bloody Fang was the ex Shadow Clan cat that she had found back when she was a deputy, but one day he vanished and never returned. Looking up, she responded to Noise Star Yes, we had a Bloody Fang. Yes, that's him. What about him? Leopard Star asked, trying to sound very firm, but on the inside, her heart was just melting. He keeps coming into my den as a spy, and I wanted to let you know. To mention, we have no part in his actions. For he has broken Star Clan law and the warrior code. Noise Star continued. Leopard Star nodded, listening, before finally speaking up. Oh, well, thank you for this knowledge. We will turn him away if he ever returns. Thank you. Just wanted to let you know that Shadow Clan is no harm to River Clan. Leopard Lear's ears turned warm at that comment but she quickly composed herself. What did he do? He is a traitor. He would come to us and tell us things and then tell the other clans, but in the end he betrayed Shadow Clan. That's horrible. I'm so sorry to hear that. Leopard Star attempted to comfort him. The two leaders continued to speak back and forth before Eventually, Leopard Star realized how long they had been talking. Um, I wish you a safe travel back. Would you like a few of my warriors to escort you home? He shook his head. I'll be okay. Thank you, though, he said before 
giving her a charming smile. Of course. I, um, hope to see you soon. Perhaps the gathering? She stumbled over her words. Of course, Noise Star said smoothly. In a more hushed voice, she whispered, and maybe we can see each other again soon. Noise Star looked a little startled, but quickly composed himself. I'll see what I can do. I have to do some hunting and having a bit of a war with Wind Clan at the moment. Especially considering they previously took our kits. Leopard Star gasped. Wind Clan did what? Noise Star simply nodded. She hissed under her breath. Not surprisingly, Wind Clan has been scented in our territory and their patrols continue to harass our cats. Maybe it's okay if we can form an alliance, if possible. Leopard Star's heart was beating a mile a minute. Yes, of course, she responded, Noise Star giving her another smile before speaking. Thank you. I'll see you soon, she says, smiling and bowing her head before leaving the den. Noise Star said goodbye as she slowly saw him out of camp, meeting back up with Little Otter. I'm so sorry about that. Please continue she said, sitting down. Little Otter nodded. Well, I want to learn how to be a real warrior, she said nervously. Leopard Star looked up at her. You are a real warrior, in my eyes. Is there anything I can do for you? Leopard Star had an idea. Uh, how about an apprentice? Oh, I would love that. Little Otter said, her face glowing with excitement. All right, I'll get working on that then, Leopard Star said. I must go now, but if you could lead a patrol tonight, that would be so helpful. Of course, thank you, Leopard Star, Little Otter said, as they both parted ways. It had now been a few days later. The gathering was slowly approaching, but the scent of Wind Clan was growing ever stronger, and she wanted to make sure that Noise Star was okay, so she quickly headed out. Approaching the Shadow Clan camp, she spotted a few cats outside, immediately recognizing Noise Star, but immediately a cream colored apprentice approached her. What are you doing here? he asked. In the background, you can hear Noise Star seeming to be teaching the other apprentice. He must be training them. Leopard Deer simply shook out her pelt and said, Hello. I am not here to harm. I just want to see your leader, she said calmly, continuing to watch Noise Star from afar. The apprentice looked around and sighed before turning to get his leader's attention when Leopard Star quickly added, Oh, I can wait. The apprentice closest to her continued to try to get Noise Star's attention, but he was very focused on training. Eventually, he took a moment to look up, spotting Leopard Star and smiling, padding over to her. Oh, uh, hello. Uh, hi, she purred. What a surprise, he says very calmly. Sorry to interrupt. No, no, it's fine. What's up? he asked. I just wanted to let you know that we have not seen the cat you spoke of. It seems like they are gone for good. Waiting for Noise Star to respond, she looked over to see the apprentices gently uh, playing with each other and snickering back and forth. It was very cute. Yes, I saw. Probably went rogue, he said. She couldn't help but nod. Probably for the best. No loyalty in traitors, she hissed. But, um, what brings you here, was that all? He asked with the familiar charming smile. Uh, oh, well, I just uh, kind of wanted to see you, she said, 
trying to hide her emotions, but quickly um, coming up with something else to say. Um, are, are those your apprentices? Indeed, he said. I'm training both of those two to become warriors at the moment, he continued. She nodded shyly and looked over. You're doing very well with them. They will become great Shadow Clan warriors one day. Thank you. Dustpaw is already a very good hunter. They continued to chat for a few moments before Leopard Star spoke. I should probably head back. Clan probably needs me, she said, looking at the ground. Noise Star nodded. Of course, likewise. I have a safe travel, he said, smiling and bowing his head to her before walking off. Thank you, I will, she says, blushing and quickly turning to leave. Walking back into camp, she noticed a few cats were missing. Her deputy, Ghost Tail, was supposed to be leading a patrol, but nee, she wasn't around. It was just then when Little Otter ran over to Leopard Star. Leopard Star, I, we found, something happened. Leopard Star tried to calm Little Otter down. Please, what happened? Ghost Tail and Springshine, they're both dead. The others made it out. They were attacked and they think it was Wind Clan. It was hard to tell, but the scent, it smelled like Wind Clan. I understand. Go get as many of the clan as you can. I will hold a meeting, Leopard Star said, looking out over the clan. All cats old enough to swim meet me under the rock for a clan meeting, she said, her voice booming throughout the camp. Leopard Star was furious. So many clans had had issues with Wind Clan. She spoke. A Wind Clan cat has murdered Ghost Tail and Springshine. If we see any Wind Clan cats, we attack on sight, she said. What kind of clan would kill a deputy and a medicine cat? A few gasps could be heard from the clan, but Leopard Star continued. Little Otter, will you be my deputy and help me lead River Clan? She asked. I will. I promise, Leopard Star, Little Otter spoke. Good, Star Clan shines on you. I would also like to announce that Echo Paw will become Echo Whisper. She was apprenticed by Springshine herself, the best medicine cat River Clan has ever had. Not to say that Ghosting Breeze or any of the other medicine cats weren't also equally amazing, but she was really, really upset by Springshine. Um. But after, she yelled out, Clan dismissed, before leaping down and walking over to Little Otter. Little Otter, please make sure we have a strong patrol. I must speak with Wind Clan. Her voice strong and stern as she turns and walks straight out of River Clan territory. Her paws taking her the ever familiar route towards Wind Clan. Leopard Star felt adrenaline flowing through her veins as she ran directly inside of the Wind Clan camp, suddenly surrounded by Wind Clan cats, but she wasn't afraid at all. She stood there for a moment with her head held high, knowing that eventually they would pick up on her strong scent and immediately notice her, which didn't take very long. After looking around for a few moments, she noticed that Wolf Star was simply lounging about with all of his loyal clanmates around him. Eventually, a cat known as Blitzheart turned around and noticed her. Before he could say anything, she spoke out. Did I come at a bad time, Wolf Star? You could hear the anger dripping from her voice, even if she didn't outwardly show it. Wolf Star's head shot around as he made eye contact with Leopard Star. A genuine look of surprise and shock on his face as he got up and walked over to her. Oh, well, it depends. What brings you here? Leopard Star wanted to tear into him right there for even having the gold to pretend he didn't know what she was here for. To 
Two of our cats were killed. They scented of your clan. Noticing how some of the other Wind Clan cats began to stand up and look at her, she quickly composed herself. I'm not here to fight, but this is a warning. Wolfstar blinked a few times before eventually speaking up. Excuse me? Leopardstar again felt the anger rise in her. How could he be so foolish? She tried to remember what Noistar had mentioned to her and then spoke up. Shadow Clan also speaks of you stealing their prey. Blitzheart had been quiet this whole time, but his face seemed one of genuine concern. Eventually, he spoke up. Why have you come alone? More Wind Clan cats began to approach her as she took one small step backwards, realizing she really wasn't in a good position to upset anybody. A as I said, I do not wish to fight, but we are no longer friendly with Wind Clan. My warriors have remained within this territory during hunts. None of them have gone longer than an hour, Wolfstar barked. The cat Leopard Star, assumed his deputy, spoke up again. Our clan has done none of this. All of our members are here. He turned and gestured with his muzzle to the small group. Perhaps your warriors sent it wrong. I know what I scented. That's all I have to say, Leopard Star finally said before turning to leave just when the deputy spoke up again. Then you must be mistaken. I know these cats. We have no quarrel with you. And if you did, you wouldn't have come alone. He had a good point. Although Leopard Star didn't want to admit defeat, she simply gazed over to Wolf Star. I will leave you to tend to your clan, she said, before walking off out of Wind Clan. While she didn't look back, she could tell that Wolfstar was glaring at her. Once out of the camp, she could feel tears rolling down her eyes. That was a lot, and trying to keep it all together was hard. She knew exactly who could make her feel better, and she immediately ran over to Shadow Clan. Panting as she finally approached, she spotted Noistar with Blackheart? She would be able to figure out why the Thunder Clan deputy was here later, but for now, she needed to talk to Noistar. Making a beeline towards him, Blackheart actually stood up and stopped her. Leopard Star was honestly a little overwhelmed at this point, but she could make out Noistar speaking. Oh, there she is now. Uh, hello, she said, kind of to the whole group, as Noistar began to pick up on her nervousness what's what's wrong leopard star he said just as black heart also stood up what's wrong i i just left wind clan i i found two of my clan cats dead and and they sent it of wind clan he tried her best to keep it together as noise star continued oh and Wolfstar refuses to accept that. By this point, other Shadow Clan cats had come out of the camp to hear her. She quickly quieted down. I just wanted to warn you. Some cats began to whisper about Bloodfang and wondering if they really were behind all this before Noise Star spoke up. Well, it looks like we have a meeting to go to. He looked over at Leopard Star and gently nuzzled her cheek, as if to say don't worry, before looking around. Gather your warriors. Then meet at my den, he said before he was cut off by Little Otter, her deputy. Leopard Star! Leopard Star! Little Otter screamed as she halted to a stop right before her. What? What is it, Little Otter? There's rogues! I can't try to steal the kits! Leopard Star's eyes widened. Little Otter, get back. Kill any rogues you need to. I will be there right away, she said very calmly and sternly as her deputy nodded and darted back to camp. 
quickly, Leopard Star looked over to Noise Star and the rest of the cats. I hope to see you all at the gathering. River Clan will be there, she said before darting off back to camp, chasing her deputy. Back at camp, she immediately noticed Echo Whisker safe inside the medicine den, which was a sigh of relief, but past her was all of her clanmates surrounding apparently this rogue and she needed to get there as quick as possible. Approaching the group of cats, she realized how chaotic it was, but at least her clan could stick up for themselves while she was gone. Although she felt bad for being gone in the first place, she should have gone straight home after Wing Clan, but now was not the time to think about things like that. She needed to figure out what was going on. Words quickly turned to claws as the rogues refused to leave, and Leopard Star was going to make sure they knew they were not welcome here, especially if they had evil plans on stealing kits. Eventually, they both ran off. She sent a few of her warriors to follow them out, just to make sure that they uh, made it very far away from River Clan territory, before turning back to her own camp and slowly making her way up on the high rock. She was honestly so exhausted and slowly rolled over onto her back, letting the nice warm sun, you know, ease her bones and such, just as Honeykit busted into camp. Honeykit looked up at her foster mom with big eyes. Leopard star? Oh, okay. I'll just... She began as Leopard Star quickly got up. Oh, no, no, uh, yes? I, I missed you, Honey Kid said. Leopard Star had been so busy ever since becoming a leader, but she smiled. You can come up here and nap with me if you want to. Honey Kid purred. I, I can? Of course, she said, moving her tail to give room for Honey Kid to lay. Thank you, Honeykit said as they climbed up and snuggled next to Leopard Star. Just as the two of them began to doze off, a group of her clan cats approached with Lamb, the same rogue as before. Leopard Star lifted her head. And what do I have the pleasure? she asked. There was a very long conversation, but to recap, Lamb, the rogue, wanted to join but was a little rebellious and didn't really want to follow rules. But eventually, Leopard Star came to the conclusion that she would be very heavily watched if uh, allowed to join, and she would have to prove herself. However, this conversation was interrupted when Colfer and Blitzheart entered into the camp. Leopard Star, he dodged a few cats approaching the leader, I wish to speak with you. The leader nodded and simply said, my den, as she leaped off the rock and headed towards her small log den. Once both cats were comfortable, Blitzheart spoke. I speak to you on behalf of WindClan. Tomorrow night, we wish to address the concerns and rumors spread throughout both your clan and others. After a few intense moments of her staring at the deputy, she spoke. That's fine. I have been wanting a gathering soon anyways. Good luck getting Shadow Clan to agree though. It was no secret that Noise Star didn't like gatherings and didn't really necessarily always go to them. Blitzheart quickly spoke up. Four trees then. It's settled. He dipped his head respectfully. They have already agreed, he said before leaving the camp. Leopard Star was pretty shocked, but at least this would give her a chance to see Noise Star. During the next few days leading up to the gathering, Little Otter became very ill. She asked Leopard Star if she could step down as deputy to give her time to rest and just enjoy the rest of her life. Leopard Star completely agreed and wished her a fast recovery, but now she needed to have another announcement where she picked a new deputy, and promoted some of her warriors. River Clan, if you are old enough to swim, meet me for a clan meeting. She spoke upon her rock. Looking past her clan mate, she spotted two cats by the entrance. One, Noise Star, who just calmly strolled in, 
And another was a strange kitty pet, but didn't seem like a threat, so she decided to continue on with what she needed to do. Looking down at Noistar, she smiled. Oh, Noistar, you may join and we can speak after. Sure thing, he said, as he shuffled through the crowd over to her den. She couldn't help but blush as she looked back over at her clan, quickly composing herself. I will be picking a new deputy tonight, as we all wish Little Otter a speedy recovery. Colfer, do you accept the position of River Clan deputy? The dark coated, fluffy Molly stood up. I do, Leopard Star. Wonderful. May Star Clan approve my choice. She then turned her attention to Graypaw, a small gray apprentice. Graypaw, you have trained hard, and you will now be known as Gray Pebble of River Clan. The clan erupted with celebration as Gray Pebble nodded. She then turned to Honeykit, pride beaming on her face. Honeykit, you are now six moons and are ready to be an apprentice. You will train under Echo Whisker. Tomorrow night we have a gathering, so everyone rest and eat. Clan dismissed, she said, leaping off the high rock and over to Noistar, who was waiting by her den. Noistar waited until the kit was gone to speak. Well, I've been asked to a gathering at Four Trees tomorrow night by Wind Clan. The she cat nodded. I was asked the same. I thought so. She still wasn't sure what Noistar had against gatherings, but she quickly spoke up. River Clan plans on attending. So do I and Thunder, he finally said. Oh, uh, this shall be fun, she chuckled. Just be prepared. No fighting. But just prepare in case of anything, he said. Of course, of course. She couldn't help but lock eyes with her medicine cat, Ghosting Breeze. He was looking suspiciously at Noistar. Did he suspect something? She wanted to get up and follow Ghosting Breeze, but quickly decided not to as Noistar spoke. Anyways, see you at the gathering. Yes, see you then, she purred. He shot a smile at her before strolling out of the camp. She watched as the Shadow Clan leader left before turning her attention back to Maple Kit. I was wondering where I should sleep. I don't have any parents. Leopard Star thought for a moment before speaking. The nursery. Uh, hopefully a queen can care for you. Feel free to ask around. Uh, follow me, she said, leading the kit towards the nursery. Here you go. You will be safe here, she said, watching as the kit darted into the nursery. Okay, thank you. Leopard Star smiled and nodded as she left the kit, letting them settle in as she made her way over to the warrior's den, happy to see Colfer there. How is everything, Colfer? Everything is going well, Leopard Star, the deputy responded. Good. Tomorrow at night is our gathering. So make sure everyone's ready, okay? She asked. All right, Colfer responded, before Leopard picked up on a rogue scent. Turning around, she spotted a tuxedo cat wearing a purple collar, who seemed to be complaining. Do these cats not have a leader? Sheesh, he said. Leopard Star was about to tear into him verbally when two of her clanmates showed up with a kitty pet behind them. This cat didn't smell of the harshness of a barn, but more like the softness of a two-leg nest. She figured whatever this rude rogue wanted could wait, so she walked over to this kitty pet. How may we help you? she asked calmly. Well, it's too dark to go get myself home safe. I was hoping to uh, stay here tonight, the soft-spoken kitty pet asked. Leopard Lear wouldn't be so quick to trust kitty pets usually, but this one, she just felt like she could trust them and realized that she also needed someone to watch over Maple Kit. 
that's fine. In return, you must stay with Maple Kid in the nursery tonight. Colfer sent her a concerned look, but Leopard Star was still confident in her choice. This little kid has lost their parent, she explained. I'm Soup, by the way, she said with a soft gaze. I'm happy to watch for the night. Leopard Star nodded, then looked over at Colfer. Wonderful. Colfer, keep an eye on our guest tonight, please. This way, hopefully everyone could be happy. The kit was already so excited, purring and playing with soup. Tomorrow morning, you will join our clan or leave. Your choice, she said, as she turned around to finally confront the grumpy rogue who was still complaining. Are you the leader around here? The rogue asked. Yes, and as you can see, a busy one, Leopard Star glared. Well, I have something that's pretty important. You see, I presume your cats have been on my territory. The River Clan leader couldn't help but chuckle. Didn't think rogues had territory. Clan cat smell is all over my barn, and the camp by there said they had nothing to do with it. The tom cleared his throat, seeming to be holding back a growl. Leopard Star sighed. I can assure you, River Clan stays far away from your barn. And I would not trust them if I were you, she said in reference to Wind Clan. The black and white cat rolled his eyes. I don't trust any of you wild vermin. I know what I smelled. Leopard Star rolled her eyes even more dramatic than him. Is that all? I have important things to take care of. The rogue finally let out a puff. Fine, I'll see myself out, he said before pushing past her towards the exit. Ugh, she let out a sigh. Thankfully, things seemed to... Calm down for the most part, but tensions were still at an all-time high with some of the leaders bickering. But today was the day for the gathering, and hopefully all of this would be settled one way or another. Leopard Star leaps up onto the rock. Any cat may come to four trees. She gave her deputy one solid nod as she leaped off the high rock and crossed the river, leading her clan to the four trees. She crossed the bridge and immediately began to smell all of the different clan scents. They were the last one there, but that was okay. Leopard Star liked to be fashionably late. She walked past all of the different cats as she made her way atop with all the other leaders. Leopard Star was the first to speak. River Clan has lost our old deputy, Ghost Tail. We scented Wind Clan, but saw no cats. We do not wish to start a war with Wind Clan, but we are cautious. Small hisses could be heard coming from Wind Clan and River Clan, respectively, as a few of their warriors caught eyes with each other. Suddenly, Noise Star spoke up. My clan has disbanded for the loss of our kits. The reasoning, Wind Clan warriors have taken them. This certainly seemed to upset some of the cats in the crowd. Accusations could be heard back and forth. However, we are glad to still be here and will be growing ourselves back strong again. Despite everything, we do not wish any harm or war, he ended. Leopard Star wanted to go over and nuzzle him, but she knew better, especially now in the middle of a gathering. But she did speak up. I'm sorry to hear that noise, Star. If you need any help, River Clan will support you. The Tom flashed her a gentle smile and a quiet thank you, just as the other leaders looked like they were about to speak. Wolf Star, the Wind Clan leader, waited a moment for them to finish before speaking up himself. As saddened as I am to hear about this, it was not Wind Clan's doing. A few cats could be heard cheering on Wolfstar, 
Wind Clan was very loyal to him. Maple Star, the Thunder Clan leader, watched as Noise Star and Wolf Star went back and forth. She was a very fierce cat, but was fairly quiet. Then it suddenly hit Leopard Star, and she spoke up. Wait, there was a rogue, Toy Box, who came and threatened the clan. This piqued Maple Star's interest as she turned to Leopard Star. A rogue? Hearing Maple Star speak up, Wolf Star and Noise Star both looked over. They all questioned as well. Then suddenly Blackheart, the Thunder Clan deputy, spoke up. There was also Bloodfang. He nearly killed me. Maple Star looked sympathetically at her deputy before looking at the rest of the leaders. We've had trouble with rogues ourselves some moons ago. Everything got very quiet. It was unlike Maple Star to speak up about such deep Thunder Clan issues, so it must have been very serious. Leopard Star gently placed a paw on Maple Star's. Perhaps they are the real issue then. Wolf Star begrudgingly spoke up. Well, we've been having rogues stick closer to our borders as well. Noise Star added, some rogues came in our camp and stole herbs and prey. In the heat of the moment, Leopard Star added, and one tried to steal our kits. It seems that the rogues are getting too bold, Maple Star hissed. Yes, I agree, Leopard Star added. Very much so, Noise Star also added. It's getting out of hand. River Clan will keep an eye out and reject any rogues, just to be safe. The last thing we need is a spy. Noistar nodded. Same here. We just need more warriors. At that, Leopard Star blushed a little bit. Did he want kids in the future? She shook her head quickly and continued to pay attention to what was happening. Blitzheart apparently wanted to speak. If we did do the murder of your deputy Leopard Star, he turned to face her. You would have not been able to track him back to our camp. Noise Star immediately sat up. What are you trying to say? Leopard Star felt her heart pounding out of her chest as he stood up for her. She shot Wolf Star a glare before looking down at Blitzheart. We have already settled this, dear Blitzheart. Wolfstar simply shrugged. That is what you said, Leopard Star. Leopard Star was upset. They had already figured all of this out, at least she thought. Why was this cat bringing everything back up? Blackheart spoke up. Blitzheart, it's settled. Let them believe what they wish. Taking a few deep breaths, Leopard Star spoke up loudly. We should end this gathering on a good note. I don't see any more issues. It was silent for a few moments. All of the leaders exchanged glances before Noise Star spoke up. Very well. At least she knew that he had her back. Reluctantly, Wolf Star spoke up. I agree, but you could tell he really didn't. Very well then, we will stay peaceful and keep an eye out for rogues. Leopard Star bowed her head to the leaders and spoke. I wish you all a safe travel home, she said before leaping off of the rock and walking over to her clanmates. River Clan, let's go home, she said as she led the way. Colfer, her deputy, making sure nobody got left behind. The clan made it back safely and everything went on fine for many, many moons until one day, Leopard Star was returning home from patrol when Echo Whisker told her something horrible. The medicine cat had spotted a Thunder Clan warrior stealing some of their herbs, and now they were unfortunately low on a lot of things. Leopard Star nodded and told them both not to worry. She would handle it. She quickly walked into the warrior's den. Leopard Dash, Russet Snarl, I'm sorry to wake you both. 
The two warriors yawned and looked over at her. A Thunder Clan cat has stolen some of our herbs. Will you help the medicine cat refill the den when you can? You don't have to go now. It can be in the morning if you need, she said, watching as her two warriors slowly began to wake up more at the sudden realization of a thief. Leopard Dash yawned. Oh, I'll do it now, she said, and Leopard Star smiled, quickly following after her. I'll join you. Working together, the clan was able to refill the medicine den no problem, but it was suddenly that Leopard Star noticed and picked up the scent of another Thunder Clan cat. She leaned down. I see you. You better get out of here, Thunder Clan cat, she hissed. Colfer, the deputy, quickly ran over to Leopard Star as soon as she realized something was happening. After your clanmates stole our herbs, Leopard Star hissed, clawing at the ground. Russet Snarl, one of her senior warriors, quickly approached the other side of her. They had this cat surrounded. It was tense and silent for a few heartbeats before Leopard Star nodded at her deputy, Colfer, who quickly pinned the Thunder Clan cat. Raven Feather, you will come with me to Thunder Clan. The enemy warrior hissed and tried to get free, but Colfer dragged their body out of the bush. Russet Snarl, you will come with me, and Colfer, you will stay and watch the camp. The three cats made it to Thunder Clan and were greeted by Maple Star. While Leopard Star wanted to stay friendly with Thunder Clan, she was getting fed up. We found one of your cats stealing from our medicine den. Maple Star looked very shocked. Stealing? Raven Feather, why would you steal? We would have given if asked, Leopard Star felt the need to add. The Thunder Clan warrior simply stood there, bowing his head. I'll let you deal with them, but next time we will attack, Leopard Star warned. Maple Star simply looked over and spoke in a soft voice. I apologize deeply. Leopard Star nodded and turned towards the exit, motioning for Russet Snarl to follow. Walking back to camp, she spoke a little with Russet Snarl and couldn't help but feel a connection with him, as if they knew each other in a past life. But as she neared her own camp, the strong scent of Shadow Clan brought her back to reality. The first cat she spotted was Blackheart, the Thunder Clan deputy. What was he doing here and not in his own camp? Striding past him, she let out a loud remark. We just returned one of your thief of a clan mate. But just like that, every brain cell she ever had escaped through her ears and her mouth as she watched as Noise Star entered into her camp. Leopard Star quickly shook her head. What, what is going on? She asked as Noise Star approached and sat down next to them. Well, a warning. There was a rogue, Blackheart spoke. Colfer, her deputy, quickly approached the group as well with her claws out, just in case. The next words out of Noise Star's mouth caused her to audibly gasp. Our clan has disbanded. That meant it was finally time. If he didn't have a clan to lead anymore, then he could join River Clan, and they could be together, and they can have kids, and her mind just began to whirl. Her face, on the other hand, remained very calm and stoic as he continued to speak. It is only me now. And while outside she looked sad, inside she was happy. If he had any old mates, that means he didn't now. Taking a deep breath, she composed herself and tried to act normal. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that noise, Star. During this time, Blackheart and Colfer were exchanging little hisses and growls, and so Leopard Star quickly spoke up. Blackheart, I suggest you leave. But she was quickly turned to back to Noise Star. Wind Clan has disbanded as well. 
Blackheart frowned. I will do that as soon as Noise Star has been seen to. Leopard Star rolled her eyes and looked back to Noise Star. You don't need to worry about my affairs with Noise Star. Anyway, I'm not surprised about Wind Clan. Wolf Star was weak. The group of cats continued to speak, and eventually Blackheart agreed to leave. Noise Star, would you join me in my den? Leopard Star asked. Without waiting for a response, she walked over to her den, smiling when she heard a small sure from Noise Star as he was following her. As soon as they both were comfortable, he let out a small, you have a house cat staying here? Leopard Star was a little taken back, but responded. Why yes, we needed a queen, and Soup is a wonderful kitty pet. But I need to ask you something. Are you really thinking about joining Thunder Clan? No, I'm not joining. I stay loyal to my clan, Noise Star said. Leopard Star felt her heart break a little, but she took a deep breath. Oh, okay. After a few moments of awkward silence, he spoke up. I want to rebuild my clan. Leopard Star just felt so defeated. I understand. I just, by Star Clan law, I wish to stay loyal. I, I always hoped that you would join River Clan one day. She spoke, trying to keep it together, but it was obvious by her voice that she was falling apart. Not that I wanted anything bad to happen to Shadow Clan, of course, but Noise Star didn't respond for a few minutes. Leopard Star felt so foolish. Her eyes began to swell with tears as she finally looked up at Noise Star, who only responded, I wish to rebuild Shadow Clan. A few tears rolled down her face as she nodded. I understand. But I'll always be an ally, Noise Star added, obviously not wanting to see her upset. He slowly reached his paw out to touch hers. Maybe when worse comes to worse, I'll consider, he said under his breath. Leopard Star's eyes lit up and she looked up at him. I'll wait. The two leaders stare and smile at each other before eventually both looking away. Take care of yourself, Leopard Star. Of, of course, I should get back to work. You as well. They stared at each other for a few more moments before he quickly darted out of River Clan territory. She couldn't help but watch him as he left. Were things finally looking up for her? She wondered. It had now been many, many moons since she had last spoken with Noise Star in private. The issue with the rogues had unfortunately continued, and they began to take out Wind Clan cats. Shadow Clan and River Clan tried to help, but both of them were very quickly overpowered, and both sides, all three sides, saw many losses. I am sad to announce the passing of Colfer. She was a great deputy, but now my new deputy will be Russet Snarl. This ginger and brown tom was one of her senior warriors and very trusted. He was a good choice. She also got the feeling that maybe he had feelings for her, but she couldn't pay that any attention when her focus was still so much on Noistar, the Shadow Clan leader. But back to this meeting. Honeypaw has trained hard and learned everything from her mentor and will now be known as Honeybriar. Russet Snarl's ears perked up and he looked a little shocked, but Leopard Star was busy and she had to continue. Maplepaw, you will train 
with Leopard Dash. It was suddenly that a familiar Thunder Clan cat strolled in. What did Blackheart want now? A few of the soon-to-be apprentices were squabbling over mentors, so she quickly spoke. Um, yes, yes, uh, match yourselves. I need to take care of something. I'll be back. Young Leopard Star would never dream of doing anything so uh, non-professional, but as she's gotten older, she's learned to just kind of go with the flow, and so she approaches the two Thunder Clan cats. Well, if it isn't Blackheart, she said with a genuine smile. She had met the ThunderClan deputy before many times, but this time he interrupted her. It's Blackstar now, but he sighed. Leopard Star tilted her head. Oh, I see. Er, congrats, I suppose. In order for the deputy to become leader, this usually means that the leader has lost their last life. There was a few moments of awkward silence before Black Star spoke up again. Uh, Maple Star died in a fire. Oh, she was a good leader. I'm so sorry to hear that. Leopard Star had heard about Tulek starting a small fire over by Thunder Clan seemed like all the cats were getting bad luck nowadays. Yes, she was a great leader, he says. And he was right. But unfortunately, every great leader one day must pass on the leadership. There was another few awkward moments before Black Star spoke up again. We came because we need shelter. The fire ended up engulfing our territory. The River Clan leader thought for a few moments. Hmm. Fine, but please stay peaceful and hunt for yourself. The new Thunder Clan leader nodded his head respectively. Yes, Leopard Star. As she turned and walked back over to her high rock. She then began to explain why the few Thunder Clan cats were here and even though some of her clanmates weren't exactly happy, they understood her reasoning. A few days later, the camp was attacked by rogues, but thankfully Black Star was there to help, and Noise Star appeared just in the nick of time. The three leaders were able to seemingly take down most of the rogues. Hopefully that would be the end of them for now. Leopard took a moment to nap on her usual rock when Soup, the kitty pet, approached. Um, Leopard Star, she said, bounding over and taking her chance to talk to the ever-busy leader. The River Clan she-cat kept her eyes closed for a few moments. She definitely heard, but was tired, but eventually opened her eyes and sat up, looking at her old friend. Yes, Soup, she asked. Well, I don't know if you've noticed, but I've been watching over Maple K Maple Paw for a few days now. I adore this place, I do. It's amazing, but I know I'm not suited for this lifestyle. She nodded to the bow around her neck. I'd like permission to visit here, but keep my old home, the kitty pet finished, her eyes slowly looking down at her paws nervously. Maybe a younger leopard star would have been nervous to grant access to a kitty pet, but in her old age, she couldn't help but smile. That's fine. I appreciate your time here, Soup. River Clan will always welcome you. The two she cats slow blinked at each other, just as noise star entered the camp thank you the kitty pet grinned feeling a surge of pride of course safe travels kitty pet leopard star said before looking over at noise star she walked over to noise star and smiled glancing over her shoulder she noticed black star so she quickly said let us go to my den however it seemed like black star gave them a small grin and stayed behind on purpose. 
Leopard Star smiled and, with Noise Star, went inside her den. Once alone, she realized that this was her moment. She had to tell Noise Star how she felt. Fiddling her paws before looking up at him. Noise Star, what if all three clans joined together? Think, think of how powerful we could be, she said, trying to read him. But after a moment, he only shrugged. That's what being allies are for, right? There was silence. And Leopard Star could feel a tear running down her cheek. I don't know how much longer I can lead Noise Star. I want kids of my own one day, even though I know I'm getting old. Noise Star looked over at her and gently slid his paw to touch hers. I understand. Did he? She had to tell him. I... I was thinking. Noise Star's ear twitched as he looked over at her. Hmm? Well... Maybe... She froze. Maybe my clan can join you, and I could retire, and maybe we... After a few moments, Noistar only responded, You want your clan to join me? The blue-coated she cat tilted her head. That's not the answer she was expecting, but... She responded, Well, I trust you to lead us, if you wanted. The Shadow Clan leader simply shrugged, Of course. Had he really not picked up on any of the signs over the years? Finally, Leopard Star took a deep breath. I have feelings for you, Noise Star. The Tom stood to his paws. Taking a half a step forward, I, before taking a step back, Leopard Star stood to her paws and took a step after him, looking at him nervously. He only responded, well, <laughs> do you not feel this? The same? <laughs> Leopard Star could feel her heart breaking. Her whole life, she had been waiting for this moment. And like that, she saw it completely flash before her eyes. <laughs> she began to sob. Noise Star refused to make eye contact with her. He looked at the ground. Well, y you see, I, I have a queen. Noise Star simply stayed silent, not trying to comfort Leopard Star at all. Pulling herself together, she felt angry at him. <sighs> oh. You should leave River Clan. Noise Star simply looked at her in shock, but she unsheathed her claws and took a step closer to show she was being very serious. Oh, he finally spoke up, as if questioning if she would really attack him, but she stood her ground. Yes, she said, with all the fury of her one remaining life. This was her one chance. Noise Star simply shrugged very well as he left River Clan. She held it together until he left and then turned into her den. How could he just go back home to his clan, to his mate who was expecting 
Was she really nothing to him? Eventually, as the night went on, Leopard Star knew that she would feel better if she checked in on everyone before heading to bed. But as she was getting up on her rock to look around, Black Star snarled and strutted over to her. What is the meaning of this? Meaning of what? She hissed, not in the mood. Black Star didn't back down and hissed back. Why did you kick out those Shadow Clan cats in Noise Star? They have their own camp. Do you want River Clan to take care of every cat in this forest? Are you forgetting that we are letting your clan stay here currently? Blackstar knew better than to respond to her when she was this angry. Fine, we will be leaving as well, he said calmly. And it was only two cats, me and my deputy. Leopard Star was happy to hear they were leaving and calmed down slightly. Well, sounds like the two most important cats of a clan if you ask me. But if you hold no value in our kindness, then fine. Black Star froze for a moment and thought, his short snout scrunching up. Well, I do value your kindness, and one day we will repay it, but today we must get going. Leopard Star's tail flicked towards the exit. Safe travels. Leopard Star made sure that Black Star made it out, and she slowly went and rolled over next to Russet Snarl, her deputy, and close friend. She was exhausted. The next few moons passed on relatively peacefully. She grew closer to Russet Snarl, but learned the hard way that she was too old for kids. This morning, she was planning on a simple hunting trip with Russet Snarl when Leopard Dash approached them. Oh, when you come back, Maple Paw is ready to be a warrior now. Maple Paw stood there, looking doubled in size by now. That's wonderful, Leopard Star smiles warmly at the apprentice and her warrior before picking up a familiar scent. Looking past Maple Paw, she spotted Noise Star. What was he doing here? She made it very clear that he was no longer welcomed. She approached him very cautiously. Nowadays, Russet Snarl never left her side, especially now. He puffed up slightly and stood protectively next to Leopard Star. The two leaders exchanged a hesitant hello before Noise Star spoke. Do you mind if we speak privately? He said, eyeing Russet Snarl. The she cat thought for a moment. She wanted to say no and to hiss and claw at him, but part of her wanted to say yes. Fine. Russet Snarl, if I'm not back soon, come look for me, she said before giving her deputy a small smile, then looking over at Noise Star, who only spoke. Come. We will walk and talk, he said quietly, as the two of them walked farther away. Once out of earshot, Noise Star stops. Now. Her eyebrows lowered as she was confused. Yes? Leopard Star was so confused, but before she could ask another question, Noise Star began to trot off, and she couldn't help but smile and chase after him. Eventually, Noise Star slowed down and brought them both to a familiar spot in the river, one where they used to meet back before they were both leaders. 
Leopard Star gently tapped her paw on the water, not really wanting to see her reflection right now. She was an old cat, and most of her fur was now light gray, but thankfully Noise Star spoke up. I wanted to apologize. Leopard Star could feel the tightness in her throat as she knew where this conversation was going, but she quickly swallowed. There is no need, Noise Star. You did nothing wrong. She knew they weren't supposed to be together. Maybe this was Star Clan teaching her a lesson. She would find out sooner than later. Noise Star looked confused. Then, why were you mad at me? Why did you kick me out of River Clan and banish me? Leopard Star didn't want to respond. She simply looked down at the water that was slowly becoming more calm. She could now see her and Noise Star sitting together in the reflection. Eventually, looking up, reasons of my own is all she could manage to say. The Dark Tom sighed, knowing that it was deeper than that. Listen, you're a good cat, okay? Leopard Star simply wasn't paying attention. Their reflection, it was an older version of them than she pictured when she was younger, but this was fine. Uh-huh. Oh, thanks, I guess. Noise Star gently laid a paw on Leopard Star's chin to direct her attention towards him. I know you're mad because... because I have a mate of my own, but we shouldn't jeopardize our friendship over that and our partnership. Leopard Star simply enjoyed the moment she had looking into his eyes. You're right. I... I feel my days are growing shorter anyways. I know that Rust Snarl will make a good leader. <laughs> she tried to hold it in. Noise Star simply nodded in agreement. I wouldn't doubt that, but we need to make the most of what we have because soon we will join Star Clan. Leopard Star quickly tried to wipe a tear from her eye. Yes, we have both lived many lives. She took this moment to look over at him, thinking what their lives could have been in a different timeline. But this was the one she was stuck in and she had to come to terms with it. After a few breaths, Noise Star spoke up. Anyways, take care of yourself, okay, Leopard Star? The two leaders embraced in a nuzzle for quite some time. Thank you, Noise Star. You as well, she said before she finally took a step back. A small, warm, pink glow can be seen on her face as she watches him go, leaving her completely alone by the river. A few days later, Russet Snarl, the deputy, found Leopard Star wandering around outside of their territory, and he hesitantly questioned. Leopard Star explained that her time had come, and she wanted to leave gracefully. The deputy tried to smile, but he was visibly upset. Am I gonna see you again after this? He asked. Leopard Star gently licked his cheek. Of course, I'll be giving you one of your new lives, silly. His ears flattened. 
he wanted to be happy, but he was just sad. He would miss Leopard Star. She knew that this probably wasn't going to comfort him much, but there was nothing she could do. Her fate was unfortunately already sealed. Leopard Star tried to keep it together as she wiped a quick tear away from her face. You will make a great leader, Russet Snarl. I promise. The orange and brown Tom nodded. I'll do my best, he answered, just as Noise Star approached. But Leopard Star wasn't startled. She was somewhat comforted as he boomed. Let's go. Two other Shadow Clan cats were following behind Noise Star. One she had assumed to be his deputy, and the other his mate. She walked forward. Russet Snarl close behind her as the small tunnel opened up into a large cave, a glittering crystal rock in the middle. Noise Star approaches first, with the two white cats on either side of him. She stays back next to Russet Snarl and watches. In front of Star Clan, I now hereby transfer leadership of Shadow Clan over to Snowstorm, so he may come Snowstar. Noise Star and Snowstorm shared a few last moments with each other as Leopard Star approached the rock and looked over to Russet Snarl. He knew it was time. Leopard Star was already in tears at this point after watching Noise Star and his deputy, but she tried to take a deep breath and pull herself together. I, Leopard Star, hereby transfer leadership to my deputy, Russet Snarl. You will now be known as Russet Star. I will see you again very soon, she said before, touching noses with him one last time. Both of the deputies look at each other before, watching as their leaders slowly fade into the rock. Leopard Star can hear Noise Star's voice. Let's go. The two leaders now find themselves in a vast starry plain, but it's empty. Leopard Star looks around, but then lays down comfortably. She's tired. Noise Star looks around a moment, but then quickly joins her. It's been fun, she says with a weak smile. Despite our ups and downs, she said with a small chuckle, her pelt beginning to fade into stars. Leaning forward, he gently nuzzled her. It's been fun. Thank you for being an amazing ally. Leopard Star feels her breath become shallow as she responds. Of course, I will see you on the other side. She begins to lean back on him, losing the ability to hold herself up. After she laid curled up and still for a few moments, Noise Star put his arm around her, laying beside her. In a low voice, he purrs, See you on the other side, Leopard Star. Both of these cats begin to take on a more translucent and starry appearance, just as the scene fades to white.